Hello, welcome back to Potter's RC Models and today the humble Tamiya TL01. Now, let's have a look at the basic car. Here we have a pretty stock standard TL01, or you would think. But what this car was actually used for by myself back in 2002, 2003, was the Tamiya um, Euro Cup race series, which was a fantastic proving ground for young drivers and any Tamiya enthusiasts really that wanted to race Tamiya electric cars. It was ran by the, well, supported by the hobby company. And we raced all around the tracks in the UK that like your BRCA national series, but it was for all Tamiya cars. The TL01 was used for um, the stock touring class, which I competed in. And you were allowed very, very limited, what they called hop ups um, to the car from kit standard so everyone had the same cars um you all had a handout motor that you got given in the morning and it got etched and marked with your number on it you gave it back at the end of the race day and that was your motor and you could replace it and buy a new one if you wanted to but that was your motor that you got back each round batteries were free you could replace the um use your own type of batteries the difference is Back then, we wouldn't have had an electronic speed controller in this car. It would have had a three-step mechanical speed controller, which came in the kit. You weren't allowed any fancy electronics. No, um, so it was just basic servos. And you know, at that time, it would have been 27 meg or 40 meg radio gear. The hop-ups that we were allowed, um, which I've done some on this car already, we were allowed this little GRP brace that went on the back here um, to basically remove two front bumpers because the TLO one had a bumper front and rear as standard. We were also allowed oil filled dampers, which was the Tamiya Super Mini dampers. We just so you had oil filled shock absorbers that worked considerably better than the friction dampers that they came with the standard. You were allowed to ball race the car fully to put like full ball races in it, which was obviously a big improvement and just made everything a lot freer and smoother. You were also allowed the additional towing rear uprights so you got the rear upright here that would have adjusted the negative towing on the rear arms some people chose to use them a lot it did give the car a lot of more rear end stability i personally didn't like them because i found it slowed the car down the straight line but that was a personal preference thing we were also allowed the extended drive hex it was a wider hex that made the car about five millimeters wider on the rear again not something i personally liked but some did use it and uh, that was the good effect as well. You were also allowed the adjustable um, steering arms, which I did use, but I can't seem to get hold of any at the moment for this car because this is a, a recreation of a car that I used to race. But other than that, if I remember correctly, I don't think we were allowed any other upgrades to the standard kit. So on average, the cars were coming in with every hop up on them around 130, 140 pounds. So it was a a very cheap way to go racing at a very high level if you like this is actually the shell that i used back in 2003 um it's pretty beaten and sorry for itself now but you have to remember it's best part of 18 years old um and also it got raced for a full season it was um uh, it was used a lot and uh, a lot of good memories of that racing all around the country um i was lucky enough to be very successful in this series um i had my first win at the end of the 2002 season and then went on to win five rounds all with pole position in the 2003 series um which won me the overall british euro cup title but the brilliant thing about the tammy euro cup series for each category there was the winner of the championship each year and the second place represented team gb so the british team in the tamiya euro finals so there was a, a european championship so all different uh, teams from europe would all come with the same cars the same specifications that you raced and so team gb would race against switzerland france belgium and the euros would be situated at various different places around europe now the winner of the euros would then win the coveted ticket ticket to japan to race in the Tamiya World Championship Finals. Now, the year that I won the championship, um, I was uh, re representing Team GP at the um, Snetterton U European Finals. 
Um, we actually had it in the UK. Um, just my luck, really, the year that I qualified. It wasn't in a European country. It was in England. And that was a fantastic event. It was a really well-organised event, huge entry. And we have some magazines here that we'll be able to show some pictures and race reports of later on in this video of how we got on. And I was, I was lucky enough to finish fifth in um, the Euro finals, which wasn't good enough to get me to Japan, but um, I was the highest placed Brit in our class. So I was quite proud of that and it was a fantastic thing. But what this all based really back down to, and I would, I would love to do this sort of thing again if it ever existed, was it was all about the driving. It wasn't about how much money you spent. It wasn't about what equipment you had. Everyone had the same equipment available to them. It was just purely how you set it up, how you drove it. And there was always at every round, there was at least 30 or 40 cars booked in to race. And it was so competitive and just really, really good fun. It was, but without a doubt, it was my most favorite time of RC racing. And I've made some of my best friends that I still see today through that form of racing. But um, it was a great time. And you'll see from the pictures that we put out in the magazine, it was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, so there we have what was the humble TLO one. And I'm trying to recreate this back to its, what I would have had back then. But yeah, there we go. A little insight into what we did.